Drivers, start your engines. Listening to the fastest show on IE Sports Radio. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr. I'm welcoming you to take another lap of the extra mile for today, April 23rd, 2020. And ladies and gentlemen, we have some good news to tell you. The race shops in NASCAR have been deemed essential soon. They will be opening up, and we will be one step closer to at least partially ending this COVID red flag. I know we are excited. It has been a long time since we talked about an actual race on this program. But we are hanging out and hanging out with me this evening, of course, is my co-host, Caitlin Seen. Caitlin? Daryl, thanks for having me, as always. You're welcome. How's your week been? It's been pretty good. I feel like it was a better week this week than last week, so that always counts for something. Keeping myself busy, though. It's the only thing you can do. I think we all are starting to get into the uh, dr- the drill of what this is right now. Although we saw over the weekend, some people are uh, not dealing with it well. And uh, honestly, folks, the only way we get through this is if you stay in the house. Um, I-, I know a lot of people have been upset at the restrictions, but th- this thing is mutating by the day. Uh, there was a story out that it's causing strokes in some people. So we are beyond respiratory virus with this thing now. And it is a, it's a, it's a killer. And we're going to have to sit still until there's some sort of treatment or a treatment or more likely a vaccine to give to people. So they're not catching this thing. The faster that gets done, the faster we get back out. But th- th- there's nothing we can do other than that at this point. So we just got to sit tight and um, wait for the doctors and medical professionals to do their work. Because if not, th- there's going to be a lot more sick people. Absolutely. And part of it, too, in my opinion, is the more people who are going against these orders and against what's just being asked of us to do right now, because it's not just one state, it's not just two, it's, you know, pretty much the country as a whole right now. But going against these orders, it's you're dis- you're disrespecting those people who literally are on the front lines of this and are sacrificing their own lives to help better it for everybody else. Yeah. And so many people know nurses, so many people know doctors, you know, um, I have a lot of medical people in my family and... You know, the, it, it hurts knowing there's people out there who aren't taking this seriously or aren't believing it or are calling it a hoax or propaganda and all of this other stuff. You know, when you have people you know that are literally in the trenches dealing with this, I feel like it almost hits a little differently. Mm-hmm. But it's just sad to see how many people are disrespecting that and are almost spitting on the people who are working so hard to make sure other people are living so you know it 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 sucks we got to do it and that's it that's life like then you move on you know i mean it really could be so so much worse you know we aren't getting you know there's not nuclear warfare going on right now like it could be honestly worse but this still is a war it's war on our health and it has to be dealt with so you guys you just gotta buckle down Watch Game of Thrones, maybe not the last season, mm-hmm. which I just got through because the last season sucked, but still do it. Start a new season, start a new trend, learn a new hobby. It's, you know, plenty yeah. of time to do something or just be stressed and eat ice cream. Also an option. Just have respect for your fellow human beings, people. Please. 
And with that being said, we're going to get into there's some racing news this week that we're going to quick hit before we get to our get before we take a break to call our guests for this evening. Uh, one of the news out of the F1 ranks is they are really talking about hammering this budget cap home. And guess what team doesn't like it? And guess what team? Caitlin is threatening yet again to leave F1 if somebody doesn't do what they want. Are our darling Italians really mad again? Yeah, they're mad again. <laughs> complaining about the budget cap and threatening again to leave. To At this point, I'm like, all right, see ya. You know, put your money it where your mouth is. It happens every year. Yeah. Uh, they also came out today, and the race.com reported this, that Ferrari could add WEC or IndyCar if F1 budget cap is low. So we could see F1, or we could see Ferrari adding a either going back to endurance racing, where they were legend back in the day, or coming to IndyCar, which would give IndyCar one heck of a third manufacturer. Well, so why are they complaining about these budgets then? Because that all sounds like good news to me. Because it's Ferrari and they want what they want because Bernie Ecclestone way sure. back in the 90s to try and keep them around. This is either 90s or 2000s. I don't remember when this was signed. Decided to give F, uh, Ferrari a veto over the rules. Which to this day is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I will never yeah, understand pretty impressive. the thought process. Yeah. And it is haunted us to this day so ferrari you can do what you want and we'll listen to these complaints i mean my thing is put your money where your mouth is or stop complaining at this point when it comes to that we also have news in our nascar world where down in caitlin's neck of the woods the race shops have now been deemed essential businesses and are close to reopening we know that is being discussed because that is a major step to getting NASCAR back to racing, albeit without fans for the foreseeable future. And they're also talking about a potential race date to restart the to restart action, which would be right now it's looking to be down in South Carolina where Darlington will run the first race back. Uh, Caitlin, what are your thoughts? I'm not a big fan of South Carolina right now, so I'm not a big fan of this in general, but I know that this is going to be very much against the consensus because I know everybody is very like, let's go racing, let's go racing, let's get this back, let's go. And as so I live in Charlotte, and Charlotte is literally on the border of North and South Carolina. So we're in mm -hmm. North Carolina, but I'm a stone's throw away from the border. And it's been causing a lot of problems during this shelter in place because they have pretty much have said, we don't give a crap about this. We're going to do what we want. And so it's having a lot of backlash on us. And so I'm, it's literally par for the course for South Carolina. I realize when I move here why people don't like South Carolina when they're in North Carolina. I get it now because they really are their own breed. And like I it's it's such this torrent like i get it people are very very excited to go back to racing like let's do this let's have real racing on tv but again i just see the complete contradiction of it as somebody who's been in it and is taking covid seriously because again you aren't separating yourself from anybody and darlington's a short track you're very tight together and as we've seen with all of these other things, people in close quarters, one person has it. That's all it takes for other people to spread, to get it and to spread it. I just think it's a little rushed. Um, you know, we also we have states that like Illinois just announced that they're doing their shelter in place through the end of May. Um, ours just got extended in North Carolina to into the second week of May. And so I just I'm a little frustrated. I think that it's I think it's too soon. Personally, I think that we should really be waiting for June. But again, I feel like I'm very much in the minority on that opinion. So, Our governor here, uh, Larry Hogan in Maryland, said, till when I said so, uh, Hogan has not been playing around, which it impacts him differently because he is a cancer survivor. And as we know, cancer survivors are immunocompromised at this point. So he is taking this extremely seriously. He, he actually with the help of his wife, I didn't realize the South Korean 
got 500,000 extra tests from two laboratories in South Korea, and now they're going to be able to ramp up testing quickly here. And that is going to help get Maryland back on track and hopefully get the other states open up as well. But at least we're not being led by the mayor of Las Vegas. Oh, boy. We're not- yeah, I mean, I would not be a happy camper if the mayor of the city I lived in was like, you know what? We will be the sacrificial lamb. Your tests on us. If we die, we die. It's OK. Yeah. I was like, dang, guys, you're. Okay. I was honestly shocked. We're not going to get... It was a little bit like a Hunger Games kind of moment. We volunteer ourselves at tribute. Yeah, we're not okay. going to get too political here, but that is... I think we can all come across the aisles and equals and say, that's crazy. And how they said it, I think, was like the more... Like, you know, they really were just like, we'll be the test subjects. Yeah. And, and it's like, ter- oh, okay, okay. And Turin also says in the chat, just don't hoard all the toilet paper as well. It's hard to say now. It is just now. Come The toilet paper is just now coming back into stock, by the way. Yeah, last time I um, had to go out on Monday to the grocery store, and I can say at least the grocery store was still out of stock. Um, all paper products were still out there. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Like, I'm just... It, is it not impressive that they literally hoarded the toilet paper so terribly that literally a month later we're still working to get it in stock? I'm still trying to figure out how much y'all bought. I just, I'm, I'm telling you what, there's going to be a lot of TP trees and houses come October. Oh, what Halloween! What are you do with it? <laughs> it's going to look like a paper, a uh, toilet paper graveyard at yep. here so only one special guest for this evening and that is going to be cullen kaminsky who drives who's going to drive this seat or was going to drive the season for uh paps racing in the pro 2000 series in the road to indie program uh, unfortunately that season has uh yet to start obviously as they he was actually there in the pits when they cut down or when they closed the uh re- when they closed the GP of St. Pete and said we're not racing so we're going to talk to him about that and also he's a two sport athlete Caitlin where not only does he race cars he also laces up the skates as a hockey player for the University of Pittsburgh I won't hold the college against him but I'm a huge hockey fan so that made me extra excited I think I perked up more about him being a goalie than I did for his racing which is awful to say on a racing show but it got me very excited because I'm a big hockey fan being from the north so Mm -hmm. he has my vote (laughs) he's also been doing some of the eye racing as well as they just eclipsed round four of the road to Indy series on uh, the Rikmotek e-series They ran on Saturday at Road America, which is the track. They are going to run a triple header for the Road to Indy series if the uh, if things work out and we get back to racing, which we should without fans, as long as we get the testing apparatus set up. Although that needs to be explained to um, certain people that we're not going to name today, because, as I said, this is a racing show, not a political show. And. I would like to stay away from the politics just for one day. You won't hear me say no. (laughs) So we're going to take a break. We're going to go ahead and get Cullen on the line. And when we get back, we're going to get into this interview. I cannot wait. Taryn can't wait. I know you guys can't wait either, but you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. Just like you have to wait to go back outside. We'll be right back after this here on the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. 
This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Faces Loaded is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done. We're back here on the Extra Mile on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to sports and youth sports especially, it has been talked about that it's better for athletes to have two sports instead of just focusing on one. It helps work out different muscles. It keeps athletes busy during different types of the year, and it helps alleviate the burnout that some athletes go through when they only focus on one sport. Well, today's guest is a two-sport athlete and is a very unique set of sports. One is going over 100 miles per hour on a tight racetrack next to somebody else in another vehicle. And the other, sitting between two pipes and trying to block a puck going at 100 miles per hour coming towards him. I wonder what he thinks uh, is more dangerous. We're going to ask him right now. Joining us on the line, the driver for Paps Racing in the Indy Pro 2000 Series and a goaltender for the Pitt hockey team, it's Cullen Kaminsky. Cullen, welcome. Hey there, how you doing? We're doing good. How are you? We're talking a little bit in the break. Uh, how have things been now that uh, we're in this crazy world where everything kind of revolves around our houses at this point? Yeah, uh, it's been crazy, like you just said. Um, we were yeah, we were talking before the break, and I just finished up um, my junior year actually at Pitt, so I'll be a senior next year. And and you know, I'm sure you you guys have seen everything's been moved online. So we were you know doing online classes with online meetings and uh, and some. It's called Zoom is what is how you would get get involved in the in video conference and stuff. Um, so I've been up to that, and that finally concluded. And and besides some eye racing, yeah, it's been as as crazy I think as it can be while while staying at home, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm a uh, master's student at um, University of Maryland, so I'm with you on the Zoom calls that we've been doing a yeah. bunch of those ever since this ended. Uh, did you did you yeah. keep? you know dressing up as normal for the zoom or did you just go with look i'm dressed in my pajamas so y'all just gonna get what y'all gonna get that's exactly what happened <laughs> that's all they got i think i would wake up for my 7 a.m class and 
throw on a shirt and sit in bed and the lighting probably wasn't even correct and it was yeah it was i I, I put in a little effort to for my looks in class i mean when i went to college people pretty much wore their pajamas anyway like (laughs) uggs were the modern day slippers so i mean really i don't think that that changed all that much yeah Yeah, wardrobe (laughs) is the same Welcome to college, where every day is a pajama. <laughs> and if yeah, my mother, yeah. yeah, and if my mother is listening, see, I'm not the only one that's been doing it since then. I mean, we're all at home, so who really? I'm not. <laughs> You're not alone, right? I'm not judging your fashion sense, but I may be silently judging your living room. So, oh, that's, looking- oh that's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> So, Cullen, you were you. I was looking at your Twitter back when we announced this, and just scrolling back, and I, and I could see, you know, the impending excitement for getting ready to go racing. And you're tweeting about last year and how everything went, and then the last photo is you in the pits when they closed everything off. I, I kind of felt the pain there because it, it looked like we were still going to get the race in. And then for, yeah. we, we don't know what happened. They decided to call it. Uh, what was it like that day in the garage in St. Pete? And what were your feelings when they finally called the race? Um, I don't know. It was, it was tough. Like, like you said, um, we had, I, I saw a picture of us actually, and it was the whole team just kind of under the tent and we're sitting on, we're sitting on tires and we're sitting in chairs, just huddled around. Nobody had a deck of cards for like, you would think that somewhere we had a deck of cards to kill the time. And we, we sat there probably for five hours or it had to be just not knowing in the dark what was going to happen. Um, so it was just, it was just a lot of, um, you're really anxious, you know, cause you, you get to St. Pete, wherever you're coming from, the whole team's down there. Everybody's, you know, doing everything they can in the off season we were testing in, in you know in homestead florida um and sebring places like that like all before um, we roll up to st pete so you're anxious you're ready to get going and then yeah to kind of have it um taken away from you real quick was just it, it really sucked yeah like you said you know you kind of felt that little bit of a pain and, and even staying staying trying to stay focused you know we had that one practice right like we we still were able to get on track and and assume that we were going to go about business as, as normal, but then mm-hmm. um, to have it pulled from you, you're trying to stay ready and, and try not to think about that. But it was, it was a little bit painful, but obviously at the end of the day, you're worried about, you know, everybody's safety in the paddock and you're worried about everybody's safety in the country, in the world. So it was, it was a bizarre day for sure. So you guys were really one of the few to actually get on track. Um, I know there's usually not that many people at the race that early when you guys are at practice, but what was it like just having no fans at all around? It had to feel eerie to have all the bleachers set up and all the signage and all the carts were out there, but nobody was using them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was strange because, like you said, at, yeah, on a Friday practice, we're not going to see a ton of fans in the grandstands necessarily, and you do. You, there, there's, you know however many people might be up there. So you definitely, cause you don't pay attention to them when you're in the car, but it's definitely noticeable when you see a packed grandstand at, on, on race weekends before, you know, the Indy car race and you're on track when you notice it. But I think the weirdest thing was not having any fans um, like in the paddock area, you know, whoever gets those passes to kind of go to the paddock and, and come up close to the, uh, to the team tents and stuff. And I'll, I'll talk to fans a lot and stuff and, and show them around the car and whatnot. If, you know, if they're hanging around. So I think the kind of not having those interactions and not having um, just, yeah, any interactions with fans outside of uh, the grandstands even is something I definitely noticed. And then, of course, they make the call that you're not going to go racing after all. So then the, the cleanup begins and putting everything away. And now we, we sit and wait and – Hopefully we get to go back racing soon. They did release a provisional schedule of what it's going to look like when you guys go back racing. And that's going to include three straight races at a uh, Road America, and you seem excited about that prospect. I, yeah, definitely. I'm super excited. That's that's my favorite place to go. Um, that is wherever I had my first race when I was younger. Um, so it's just always been a great, great place for me. And I've, yeah, I've had actually a lot of success there as well. So I, every year it, it ends up being my best finish. So. I am very excited that they that they added the third race. That could play to my favorite. So now everything's sh- uh, shut down. 
you head back home. I know you've had classes. Um, what were some of the things you were doing to, um, you know, stay in shape because, you know, everything's closed. So what were some of the things you're doing to, you know, stay in race shape as uh, we wait for the season to hopefully begin here in a couple months? Yeah. Um, besides, besides eye racing, which is a good, obviously visual and uh, still physical way to stay in, stay in racing shape along the sides of driving. Um, but besides just from a physical standpoint, I have, I have some equipment in the basement for uh, for a little makeshift home gym, but yeah, losing losing weight room um, time is definitely taking a hit. But I do try to try to exercise and work out as much as I can every day. So whether it's just you know um, lifting with weights or whether it be running um, some ab workouts, things like that, just could be endurance, just doing everything I can here and there, using maybe some stuff in the house that you find. Uh, I even made a a makeshift forearm roller out of an old cross stick. Like I'm just doing everything <laughs> I can to try and find a way to stay in shape. Yeah, you got to You, you got to be, you got to be open-minded right now and fi- just make whatever yeah. you can to stay in shape. I think that's what we're all trying to do right now. Cause the last thing you want to do is, cause I think what a lot of people start doing right now is they're eating cause they're bored. Yeah. They have nothing to do and they start eating. And you know, the racers like you, Y'all have been getting into this sh- this race shape, and the last thing you want to do is you've been getting off all this weight is to then put it back on because you've been bored eating the whole time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't want to don't want to go backwards, right? Right. That's why Tony Stewart could make a comeback. He's already good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's already got the quarantine body. He's all right. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. I don't think Tony. Even if Tony did put on some of the weight, I don't think we'd notice. I think there was some talk about him getting back into a indie car. I think he said it himself that he probably would not be able to fit. And honestly, I'd probably agree with him. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say I'd be surprised. There's a small cockpit. Yep. <laughs> so, you said- so here's one. Okay. Of, I have a question. So yeah. I think it's kind of. I was joking with uh, Daryl earlier that it's almost contradicting because we're on a racing show, but I'm a big sports fan in general. I have my own sports talk show before this Mm -hmm. show on Thursdays and I'm a, I'm from Michigan. So I'm a huge hockey fan. Like I grew up, it's like, yeah, so it's my number two sport. So So they're like, yeah, you're yeah, well, no, I'm a Detroit Red. Well, I'm a, well, okay. Uh Um, I love the Red Wings. (laughs) Um, yeah. I don't love them right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? They just, they're, I mean, they are, I can say the good thing about the Red Wings is that in the last month they have been undefeated. They haven't won any but games, but they haven't lost hey, any. <laughs> I could, yeah, we could say that about the Hawks too. They've had a rough, rough path. Uh, rough <laughs> path so this has been nice to be undefeated. You're right. Right. <laughs> it's, it's nice to have a little breather as much as I, I'm like, you know what? If we lose the, tw- you know, the 2019, 2020, NHL season, it doesn't actually hurt my feelings because I can pretend <laughs> it didn't happen. It's great. Exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what I, my question for you is where does this balance come into play? Because they're both quite major sports. Hockey is, is a mm-hmm. big sport. And, and, you know, the I feel like the more we've come into like this modern era, the longer they've been able to stretch out the hockey season. And then obviously mm-hmm. in racing, it it's a pretty well, you know, in a normal circumstance, it's a pretty lengthy season as well. So where did that yeah. balance come into play with you? And I guess, so which came first as well? Did, were you a hockey kid who added racing or was it vice versa? Like, I want to know where this balance came from because it's yeah. such a unique crossover. It really is. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the weirdest one I've, uh, I've probably ever seen, you know, you know, um, a lot of kids, you know, or you see, even in the pros, you get basketball, baseball, or baseball, football, Bo Jackson, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't, I don't know anybody else that that still continues to play hockey and races cars. So it is pretty cool. But I was a hockey kid first, um, which is even almost improper to say because I was so late to hockey. I started playing hockey when I was eleven, I think. Um, right in sixth grade is when I like went to my dad and was like, Hey, like I want to play hockey and I want to be a goalie. He's like, see the goalies are like some of the best skaters on the team. And like, you don't even know how to skate. <laughs> You're like, so <laughs> what? Yeah. So, um, I was late to hockey even as well. Um, which I guess is a theme cause I played baseball my whole life. Um, I played football even when I was younger, I was into basketball. Like I, I did it all. And then, um, 
once I decided, hey, like I want to get into hockey because yeah, I was watching the Hawks win cups and everything, and it was it was really fun. I figured, hey, this is something I could do. So then I got into hockey. Um, I played that for uh, I guess nine years, whatever it might be, eight seasons, and um, I played. I was lucky enough to continue playing in college. So the balance is just time management, I guess. You know, I think last year I probably missed. I don't know, a handful of weekends of hockey just for racing. I mean, like, at at this point, racing takes precedence in the sense that I I need to be at a test or, I mean, obviously a race weekend sometimes in September. I'm missing hockey games. Like, the start of the season is happening in September for hockey while we're finishing our season at, like, Laguna Seca uh, last year. Um, So uh, hockey kind of, you know, takes the back seat and I'll have to miss a weekend or two. So the balance is, the balance is quite hard to, to do, but it's, I don't know. You, you kind of talk about it with your coach. You realize, Hey, like I'm also a professional race car driver trying to make a career out of this. And it's something that's important to me. And, you know, the, the coach kind of understands and I'm lucky enough to work with a, a coach that does understand that at, at university of Pittsburgh. So it's, it's really just about communication and, and time management, I think, but then I'm learning as I go, I'd say. Yeah. And do you find, like, so if you were offered a position on an NHL team, like, if they were like, hey, we want to draft you, we want to pull you, would you accept it? Or would you hold off in hopes that the racing career would take, you know, because it is that you are in that, you know, you're coming into your senior year. So it is kind of leaning into that time, too, where. You know, for the college prospects, it's definitely coming into play with hockey. Do you want to do hockey Mm -hmm. professionally or are you leaning more towards this is what I'm doing through college so that, you know, but then racing, I want it to be like the long term career goal. I think I think if the Blackhawks came to me tomorrow and said, hey, we got a four million dollar (laughs) contract. I think I'd be crazy to say no. But um, yeah, I guess it all depends. Um, I Hell, I think even, you know, an NHL uh, contract and uh, an Indy 500 ride or a full season Indy car ride could, could still go hand in hand. I think um, there'd be very minimal things that you'd have to kind of miss if you really wanted to play for both professionally. So um, I don't know. I'd have to, I guess the situation would have to present itself first before I could answer that question. <laughs> it's pretty exciting, though. I was just like, as, like I said, as soon as I found out you did both, I was just like, you know, I don't even know which way I would go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, do, uh, I just that's. I, see, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it just it'd be hard. It'd be hard to say no to either because I mean, who wouldn't want to play in the Stanley Cup Finals and who wouldn't want to race in the Indy Five Hundred? You know, like <laughs> absolutely. You gotta find a way to do both, right? Hey, I just yeah, I think it's super cool. Like it's like you said, it's it's one of the weirder combinations, but in mm-hmm. that retrospect, I think it's one of the coolest combinations. You got the winter yeah, sport. But, you got the summer sport. I mean, you really checked off yeah, all the boxes. Yeah. It's perfect. And even though it's a weird combination, they, they do find a lot of similarities with just, I mean, a ton of different things. I mean, like reaction timings, just the position itself being sort of a solo position, but still a team sport. Like, it's weird enough how many similarities you can find actually between the two, even though it seems so unique. So what, were there any skills between the hockey that maybe like I – like reaction time that transfers from playing on the ice to being in the race car? Yeah, definitely. Like you just said, uh, reaction time is a big one. So obviously I got to stop a hundred mile an hour puck, but then I also got to anticipate other guys moves and, and see something coming at me from 300 yards away going 150 miles an hour. So yeah, I think, I think reaction times are uh, a big thing there. And then even, even the mental game really is something that's it's super similar and I think has helped me in, in racing. You know, you can know a lot of guys that um, if they have a bad race, you know, maybe they have a string of bad races. It could, you know, or they have a bad qualifying, well, then they don't do good in the race. Um, or they, you know, screw up qualifying number two if you're, you know, like on our series where we have a couple qualifiers. Um, being able, being a goalie, you get scored on, you're – if you let that sit in your head, you're done for the rest of the game. You know, you got to play the rest of the 60 minutes with thinking that you're going to stop every shot and you're not going to get scored on again. Um, I've definitely played with guys 
as my teammate, as my goalie partner, where if they get scored on, man, they're just as good as a traffic cone sitting in the net. Like they're not going to get anything else because they just kind of let it eat them. So um, that definitely transfers into the race car where if I, if I make a bad corner, um, you can boil it down to as simple as that. If you have a bad corner, you're not going to ruin the rest of your lap. So um, I think I think the mental awareness and, and toughness definitely translates into both. And I've been fortunate enough to take that away from both those sports. So I've got a question for you since we're talking about the, yeah. the two sports. Which one do you think mm-hmm. is more daunting? Trying to go full throttle through the kink at Road America or stopping a 100-mile-an-hour puck? Ooh, that's a good <laughs> question. I've actually never been asked that question before. Um, you know what? I'm going to have to say stopping a 100-mile-an-hour 100, 100 puck. At my level... There's some corners in racing that are more daunting than the hockey I'm playing right now. But if Zdeno Chara or Alex Ovechkin came over to the slot and wound up for a one-timer and I had to slide across the net and face that puck, that would be daunting. (laughs) (laughs) uh, (laughs) NHL shot, I'm going to say, is more daunting than the kick. But, yeah, there's there's definitely some corners in racing that'll, that'll make you a little scared, so... Yeah, there's a couple. And the kink is one of those corners where you do not wreck small. I know Catherine Legg had a big no. hit there uh, a few years ago. Yeah, those, one, those ones are scary. I've been fortunate enough to uh, to keep it on track there, knock on wood. But, yeah, that, that, one's a, that could be a scary one. So how did you uh, get hooked up with uh, Pabst Racing? Uh. Well, my dad, my dad knows uh, Augie from years prior, so we kind of we kind of had a good relationship there. And then, um, you know, we were talking to a lot of teams after uh, 2018. Didn't know if we were gonna be back in the series. Didn't know what was gonna happen. And we just kind of, yeah, talking to a lot of guys. And we obviously know what kind of a, a service Pap Pap's runs there. Um, they obviously having a lot of success. In, in the USA 2000 category. Now we're moving up to Indy Pro 2000, which is cool. But we know that they run things properly, and we knew that uh, Augie's a great guy to be with. So it just kind of gelled once we had that first conversation and realized that was a, a possible landing spot for me. So you start in the USF 2000s, now you move up to the Indy Pro 2000s. Both those series have the same number, but a little bit different with the cars. What, what is the difference between the Indy 2000 and the USF 2000 car? The uh, biggest difference between the series I'm driving right now, Indy Pro 2000, and then what I was in before, USF 2000, is probably, I mean, there's a couple of things, but I think the biggest thing that you can get used to, or is, is, is kind of tough to get used to, or you feel the biggest difference, has got to be the downforce. Um, USF 2000 cars have, I mean, have very little downforce. You got a rear wing and a front wing in front of you, but it's not putting out that much downforce, where Indy Pro, you upgrade the front wing to more flaps, um, to give you some angle there, and then the rear wing is bigger um, and puts out more downforce. So it's just knowing and learning how that is going to affect the way you drive and maybe how you break into a corner. Um, and certainly when you're behind another car, you have to, you know, they're going to punch a bigger hole in, a hole in the air. So you're going to have to figure out how to work around that that downforce when you're trying to follow and you're trying to catch people. So I think you know you have to add horsepower and the bigger tires um, help for that, but. I think the downforce is probably the biggest difference that guys will notice going going up the series. So, Cullen, you, like a lot of the pro drivers right now, have migrated online with iRacing. We've seen that mm-hmm. over the past couple of year or past couple of weeks. I'm sorry, with the, you know the NASCAR Pro Invitational, IndyCar doing their thing on NBCSN. Mm-hmm. What has made this such an attractive option for you guys? to train on and now that you're you guys are getting a whole lot more time with it how does it feel racing i racing compared to strapping into the real car it's nerve-wracking believe it or not like you you wouldn't think so but anybody you talk to i guarantee you they're going to tell you that they are more nervous to drive in i racing than they are in real life because it, it's funny because like you don't think that it would be like that but you have a lot less in your control right like you have the wheel and it's got some force feedback and obviously you can see what's going on but you don't have you know that feeling in your butt in the car and just being one with the car and the track you know like you you feel almost even you're in control there's that little bit of 
um, being out of control that honestly makes it pretty nerve wracking. It's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Does it also not help because you've got some of those drivers that um, what's a good way of putting this? Um, This isn't really their first career and more there to have fun than, you know, trained Does driving around. Yeah. Those type of drivers make it a bit more nerve wracking as well. I don't think I don't think about that part too much as it is just your own pace and your own um, ability. But being around, um, you know, a guy like uh, Phil Dennis, who's leading the championship that I'm in, um, you know, he got like those three first wins right away. And he's a guy that's been uh, simming for a long time. So it's just the, you learn little things about the sim, just like you can drive one car for how like a full season and you're going to learn its little tendencies on mm-hmm. what's going to make it go faster. It's really the same thing for the sim, but they're mostly counterintuitive of to what you wouldn't think would help in real life. So guys like me that hardly sim all year long because they're busy with school and hockey and all that other stuff, you hop, I'll hop into the simulator and not know the little nuances that are going to make me quick on the track in the virtual world. So it's not as much nerve wracking, but it's, it's tough because you're trying to compete, but yeah, we got, you know, you got guys out there who've been doing this for a long time and, and they're good. And that series that you're doing, you guys are racing uh, for a cause. Uh, tell uh, everyone a little bit about uh, what series you're racing in on iRacing right now. Yeah, we're uh, we're doing. Um, it's called the RTI E Series. It's presented by Rick Matek. So Road to Indy uh, hooked up with uh, Rick Matek and and put this thing together for us. Uh, and basically, yeah, we're we're doing a five five race season um, on on some tracks that we we usually run at throughout the year. And it's just been a fun thing that for us, for us drivers to do. You know, we paid an entry level fee, um, which goes the proceeds to a, a charity that's involved with um, obviously fighting COVID right now. Um, so that's been really cool that we've been able to to do it for fun and, and do it for a good cause as well. I know that's been a lot of fun. I, I don't think you guys have your. Uh, I don't know if you guys are, you know have your race engineers plugged in like the IndyCar drivers I have did. been doing. Um, <laughs> What is your thoughts on that? Because personally, I'm like, okay, I think y'all are officially doing too much. Because I think at Penske, they had a midweek strategy meeting before the Michigan race about how they were going to run it. And I'm like, uh, guys, y'all know it's a game, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. See, that's, yeah. See, that's the thing, though. It, it's not even a game. Like, this service, so it's called iRacing. It's like, this service is, you know, laser scan tracks crazy identical cars um like if you want to practice to go to a race that you've never been to then like this is the place to be like even though as much it is as it is um feels like a game and stuff it can be a real tool so yeah as crazy as it sounds like i, I wish i had a, a uh, my mechanics and my engineers talking over strategy before before our race in midweek because man me and my past racing team um we'll get on and we'll practice for an hour or two and we'll we'll write down the fuel mileage of every lap now and just try to figure out these numbers on how to do proper pit stops. And hell, if you're doing a, an oval like Michigan, I think strategy is a, a big thing to do. So it sounds crazy, but it, it will pay dividends. I mean, these guys, these guys take it seriously and they're, uh, they're definitely trying to win. So the help of an engineer and some race strategist, I, I can use that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And bragging rights are always on the line, right? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Bragging rights are on the line, man. Whoever comes out of this championship is going to be able to say at the next race that they were the the virtual champion. So, got to defend that. <laughs> I'm just amazed at how quickly they took to it, and now it it feels like an actual race weekend now, even though it is, yeah. com- you know, it's virtual. But we've seen some of the tracks they've gone to. Do you think if there's enough? you know, positive energy behind it. Do you think IndyCar will start to say, you know, let's try to go back to a twin ring Motegi or let's try to go back to Michigan and do this for real because there is a lot of excitement over the last two rounds for that. And I think yeah. getting you guys back to some classic cart slash early IRL tracks would do great for the series as it continues in this upward trend that it's in. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's a good question because – I think 
obviously the reason they left was the danger involved, you know, like mm. in places like Pocono and Fontana, um, Michigan, where, you know, guys are doing absurd speeds back in the cart days. Um, I think obviously that was the original concern and that's why there's so much, I think, excitement to go on iRacing because when you watch a car flip six times before the green flag comes out, um, you know, they, they hit a reset button and they're fine. So you're not putting anybody at risk. But I wonder, that's a good question because now that any car's moved in the direction of safety with the, the aero screen, I wonder if they're, they're maybe having talks about coming back because obviously the driver is a lot more protected in the event of a, of a scary one-off crash. So. Yeah, I, I think that would be very exciting, and uh, I wonder what the conversations are like for them to potentially go back. Well, if my vote has anything, please, for the love of God, go back to MIS. I got to go to yeah. the last race that IndyCar did there, and yep. it was one of those things, like, it ended, and I was like, why are we taking this away? <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say, you got to was... be a big fan of Michigan. It was in it was such a that track honestly was made for any car. It really was like watching open wheel yeah. cars run that track in person because I've been there for NASCAR and for any car, and I was like, mm-hmm. you guys just you they put NASCAR to shame. Stop cars. Yeah, they're not. You know, I mean, I mean, and not to show preference or anything, but let's be honest, no. most racetracks. IndyCar makes it look a lot sexier. So <laughs> yeah, it makes it, yeah, it's that it's that open wheel sweet car Ooh. going a little bit faster. Yeah, they're cool. I yeah, I've never I've never been to a, a super speedway. I think I was at Chicagoland, which is I mean it's smaller, but I think it was at Chicagoland when I was much younger. Um, so I don't really remember much, but yeah, just seeing those cars on TV was was incredible. They were flying. Yeah, they were, and I hope we get to go back there. And hopefully, if we do, it won't be a repeat of the debacle that was the uh, USA 500 start or the US 500 start, where they yeah. piled up the half the cars before the start of the race. Um, that yep. trended on Twitter after they had the wreck in the beginning during the during the um, the I race, and I'm like, I didn't think people actually remembered that that actually happened, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So we're getting towards the, hopefully getting close to the start of the season. One of the big races is now the road course and the oval for the, uh, what was going to be the month of May with Indianapolis has now been split into where you guys actually be doing a double header with NASCAR as well as the big yeah. IndyCar series. How exciting is that going to be? And, are you going to take a little peek at uh, what those stock car guys are going to do on a Saturday? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think that's, I think it's really cool. Um, and I'm really hoping it happens just because I mean, you're getting more exposure. you right. I mean, there's going to be dual IndyCar fans and NASCAR fans at the track at the same time, you know, ones that might not find themselves at a, at an IndyCar or NASCAR weekend, whatever they like respectively. Um, so I think that's going to be really cool. Actually just getting, a bunch of new fans, a bunch of new eyes on, on, on both series. So I think that'll be really cool. And uh, I'd be down to drive anything. So maybe I would take a peek and see what's going on. Cause that, that'll be cool watching those stock cars go around the road course. One of those Xfinity cars can be wild when it gets to road course racing. And I think you'd probably fit yeah. in just well there. So yeah. I know we, we had all these big, expectations for the start of the season that's now been pushed back to when we start the season what are you looking forward to doing this season and what are the goals for this year in indy pro 2000 Um, i'm looking forward to get back to racing first and foremost whenever that can start is going to be you know a great day and, and hopefully we can do that safely but expectations really remain the same um for right now nothing's nothing's changed except the start date of the year so expectations for me are get that first win on the road to indy you know i had a i had a lot of podiums and a lot of success last year with the polls and stuff uh, with with paps racing and us such a thousand last season but was didn't end up getting that first elusive first win so i just that that's on the checklist first and foremost you know i gotta prove that i can win a race and and I know it's there, and I'm learning every day. So I'm personally looking forward to checking that one off the list, and hopefully I can. 
Um, but I mean, ultimately I want to win the championship and once I start winning races, that's going to become possible. So, and I was the highest points finisher last year in year 6,000 without a race win. So once I, once I get those and once those start coming, I think a championship's really right in the, right in the books. All right. So Colin, before we wrap it up here, there is one question that we've been closing out with now with this COVID red flag series. Uh, Back Mm -hmm. at the start of this, there was a a certain item that conspicuously went missing and is now only started to come back here in the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to turn this question over to Caitlin before we wrap it up. All right. So here it is. It's going to be the toughest question of the night for honesty, I'm telling you what. But my question for you for the end of this, the little (laughs) silver lining. Do you, or have you, I guess, since we're getting a month into this, have you had enough toilet paper in your household to survive? (laughs) (laughs) That's good. Direct answer is yes, I have. Um, We, when everything actually did start like going out out of stock and everybody was buying toilet paper, there were a couple of times that we went to the grocery store and there was no toilet paper. So we're like, all right, we'll live to fight another day. But we never ran out before we needed it. We, we were ahead of the curve and we made sure we had some. We didn't go crazy and stock up, but we bought what we needed and then we were able to, to conserve it a little bit. And so far, fingers crossed, we have been okay and had enough <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> mm-hmm. I tell you what, I've never had to count squares until this whole thing started. And I was like, maybe <laughs> yeah. I should be a little more self-conscious here. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. It's never like, did you think, all right, only six squares today. Right? <laughs> 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 Gotta behave. Can't get up. Well, I remember yeah. one time I was like brushing my teeth and I had to blow my nose and I keep my tissues in my bedroom and I went to go Ooh. grab toilet paper to blow my nose instead and I was like, Caitlin, what are you doing? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, you I know. Can't be, yeah, you can't yelling be at myself. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, not right now. Not right now. It's, it's too dire of time. <laughs> yeah, but thankfully it's it is starting to come back and we will be back to racing soon. Uh at Paps Racing to follow the team at C Kaminsky underscore twenty seven. That's all capital letters on Twitter to follow Cullen during his season when we get back when we start racing, I'm sorry, in the IndyCar this year. Uh Cullen, I know you got some people you gotta thank for helping to get to the racetrack, so I'll give you that little bit of time before we close out. Sorry, I didn't catch that part. Say it again. Oh, I know you got some people you got to thank to help me get to the racetrack, so I was going to open the floor oh, to course. you for that before we say goodbye. Yeah, I'd like to say thanks to you guys for having me on, and you know, thanks to Road to Indy and IndyCar for trying to get us back to, to racing safely, and, and thanks to Paps Racing for uh, still having me under their tent for this year, and I'm excited to, to get back. So, yeah, I hope everybody stays safe, and, and we'll see you there. All right, I Cole. want to cut a deal right now on, on public radio. If you end up being a goalie for the Detroit Red Wings, you owe me a jersey oh. deal. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's fair. I guess, and maybe I'll throw a signature on it too if you want. Hey, there we hey. go. Hey. I go. I, I'll just take some tickets, <laughs> thank you. Like I don't know if I can support them like that, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, but if they, for some reason, find $4 million, I'll make sure that they nudge it your way, okay? <laughs> if, if the Detroit Red Wings want me to be their goaltender, I will absolutely be Detroit's number one fan, and that's on record. See, that's all that matters. <laughs> And like yeah, since, right? since we've gotten rid of we got rid of Peter Morazic, who I was a big fan of, and I'm like I'm, I, I feel empty like inside Bradley. now. So you know, yeah, I mean, if you I, filled I can, the slot, I'd be okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could fill that hole for you guys. There yeah. you go. And then you're right there at Bell Isle too, so it's right around the corner. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'll get to sleep <laughs> at my own house that night after my NHL game, and then Bell Isle the next day. See, it's a double win. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a hectic schedule, Cullen. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We definitely got to have you back on when the season gets started, man. Of course. That'd be awesome. I appreciate the call. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. Have a good one. Have a good night. You too. So that was Cullen Kaminsky. Thank you so much to Cullen for joining us this evening. We are definitely going to have to have him back. That was a great conversation. A lot going for him in the Indy Pro 2000 seat. Indy Pro 2000 series. Caitlin, he's hungry for that first win in 
the Road to Indy series, I think he's going to get it this year, especially with three chances at Road America, which he said was one of his best race tracks. Absolutely. We might see him doing a hat trick. Yep. And not in hockey. <laughs> and Cullen, if you're still listening, um, I don't need a jersey. I- I'll just take some tickets. I've actually never been to a <laughs> hockey game. I will take some tickets and I will be happy with that. With your nationals <laughs> right there. Daryl, for sure. I haven't been able to get to the Caps games, and then they won the Cup, so the prices went Caps, up by like five hundred dollars. So, oh, that's true. Now you're, you honestly, I feel like if you looked at least partly forlorn outside of the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, they might just give you the tickets at the rate we're going. Yeah, because <laughs> I want, I want. I was actually supposed to go last year, but I had a work thing that I had to do that day, so I couldn't make it to the hockey game but yeah um i I need to get to a caps game i I wanted to get to a caps game last year but man they they, these teams win championships and they start jacking these prices up so i think they do shoot i think the tickets in the 100 section were at least a grand a piece so nobody got time for that nah nah i ain't got time for that even with the stimulus check that's coming my way um how cool like i am like that is just the coolest combination racing and hockey Mm -hmm. like i just that's cool and it's and i liked how too is how he pointed out like the similarity is like how you know his reflexes and how his response times how they really do coincide with each other when it comes to racing and hockey i mean it was a very good point especially being a goaltender yep and he's got a, and I know he's got a focus. So you have to stay laser focused on the racetrack and on the in between the pipes on the rink as well, because that puck is coming at you about a million miles an hour. So you got to be Man, paying attention. I really miss hockey. I think we well, all let's talk do. about it. <laughs> that season is supposed to get started. I think in July. By the way, I don't know how they're gonna get that done. Yeah. We're just gonna have to write that one off. Which, yep. like, again, I said is okay. We can completely erase this past season out of hockey memory because the only thing we were good at was being last. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> really okay if, if we can just do a little Mister Clean dry erase on this season. <laughs> <laughs> Just go next. <laughs> I'm kind of glad. Okay. That, I'm kind of glad the season <laughs> stopped as well, just because we were uh, the Caps were starting to struggle. So hopefully now See, they've been able end to end on the note that we're on. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Red Wings. I still love you. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> oh man. So that will about do it for this episode of The Extra Mile. You can catch Caitlin's show at 5 o'clock, not what it seems, but not next week because Caitlin, it's her birthday. So she's going to be taking it's Thursday off. It's my birthday. Off. Yeah, Kate- I don't know what the heck I'm going to do, guys, but I was like, you know what? If there's one day that I can just get a little bit lost, I think it's that day. So Caitlin will be celebrating her birthday next week. We're going to have a, a spotter. For Chip Ganassi Racing, Robbie Fast is going to be joining us, and we are going to talk to him about one of the most important jobs on the racetrack, making sure that these drivers stay out of harm's way, and he's done spotting for IMSA, NASCAR, Brickyard and the Road Courses, IndyCar as well, and IMSA with the uh, Ganassi GT program. He's had 25 years of IndyCar experience. Cannot wait to talk to him next week. And if you want to keep updated on who's coming next with all of our guests, you want to keep it locked to the Extra Mile IE1 on Twitter as well as at IE Sports Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to talk to Caitlin or I, I'm at DK Junior 12, Caitlin's at Seam Radio, or at Caitlin Seam. And remember, if you've missed any episode of any IE Sports Radio show, check out the Spreaker Show Reel, SoundCloud, YouTube, where we upload as well, and other places where podcasts can be heard. And of course, Check out the website. There's a mock draft up right now in the blog section that you can go check out. Written by Mike. Thank you so much for that. 
The draft is actually going on right now, and the Redskins did not screw it up. Thank you. But we'll see I didn't even have the willpower to look. Oof. Well, yeah, the Lions are, uh... Yeah. I'm not concerned about the Lions. I was more worried about my Vikings. Ah, y'all do not pick for a little while longer, actually. Y'all don't pick till 25, so it's going to be a minute. I feel like this is probably... I feel like it's like Super Bowl party mentality for football fans around the country right now. I mean, so like the, football's on, sort of. Yeah, it's the one shred of de- uh, normalcy we still have, and even with the digital way they're doing it, it still takes them 15 minutes to get the picks in. I, I don't understand what they're doing, but that will... <laughs> That will do it here. We're going to watch the rest of the draft, and we will talk to you guys next week on the Extra Mile. For Caitlin, I'm Daryl. This has been, of course, the Extra Mile, and we will see you at the next green flag. Good night, everybody.